Hey guys and welcome back. We're going to go ahead and cover a few more questions off of the arithmetic reasoning portion of the ASVAB. So let's go ahead and dive right in and let's see what we can learn. Test here. Let's take a look at number one. It says if a barber is capable of cutting the hair of 35 people per day and he works seven days per week, how many haircuts could he give during the months of April, May, and June? So first and foremost, you need to know how many days are in each of these months. Well, if you did a little knuckle trick, you would know that April has 30 days, May has 31, and June has 30. So altogether, we are looking at 91 days here. Now, he does cut 35 per day and no days off. Off, working seven days a week. So we're just going to take this 91 and multiply it by that 35. There is no calculator here, so you got to do this by hand. Five times that one is going to give me five. Five times nine is going to give me 45. Then we jump down to the next line. Three times one is going to give me three. Three times nine is going to give me 27. Now we need to add these together for our final answer, meaning that five and zero is going to give me five. Five and three is going to give me eight. Four and seven is going to give me 11. Carry the one. Two and one is going to give me three. So our final answer here should be 3,185, which is going to be answer. Let's try two shortcuts, two for one special here on the ASVAB. It says, two, if you typed 45 words per minute, how many words would you be able to type in 12 minutes? Now, you could multiply these together using the algorithm, get your answer. A little bit quicker way might have thought of it like this. 45 times 2 gives you 90, and 45 times 10 gives you 450. If I combine the two of those, it's going to give me 540, which is our answer B. Now you can still do it this way, just trying to give you some other ways to think of it mentally since there's no calculator here. Let's take a look at three. I already drew a picture to help us out here. It says Tom, here's Tom, is flying a kite, here's his kite, at the end of a 500 foot string. His friend Kathy, Kathy, is standing 300 feet away from Tom. How high is the kite? So this is what you call a Pythagorean triple because this makes a triangle here where this would be a right angle. So you could do the thing of A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So what we would end up doing is plugging in 300 here and plugging in 500 here and solving for this guy over here. But I also know that something called a Pythagorean triple are just numbers that automatically work for this every time. One of those said things is 3, 4, 5. So in other words, 3 squared, which is 9, plus 4 squared, which is 16, equals 25, which the square root of that is going to be 5. So 3, 4, 5. So that's a Pythagorean triple. In this case, that's what we got here, except it's with hundreds. But that doesn't change the rule. So if this is 300, that's 500. Then this will end up being 400. So our final answer here is going to be C. Okay, so number four on the ASVAB says that Amy wants a fence using 400 feet of fencing. If she wants the yard to be 30 feet wide, how long will it be? So all together here, these four sides, we need this to be adding up to 400 feet, all right? Now, let's take a look here. If this is 30 then we know that this also has to be 30 because it's a rectangle, all right? Um, actually, does it say that it's a rectangle? Wants to use fence in a yard using 400 feet of fencing. If she wants the yard to be 30 feet, how long will it? <laughs> it doesn't even say that it's a rectangle, but it's the only way you would be able to do this. So let's assume that it is a rectangular yard. And that's going to be 30 and 30 for a total of 60. That means we still have 340 left to use. So that means I need to split that 340 to this side and this side in order to get our total amount of fencing here. Now, with that said, if I just cut this in half, that's going to tell me how much goes to each. Well, what is 34 cut in half? 17. So that means 340 cut in half is going to be 170. So that means we're going to go 170 on each side here. So that's how long it will be. Our final answer is A, 170. Here's a difficult one. Let's take a look at number five. It says a three-digit code must be used to access a computer file. The first digit must be an A or B, so that's two options. The second digit must be a number between zero and nine. So if it's from zero to nine, that's actually ten different options you can have there. One through nine would make nine, zero would be ten. 
And then it says the final one is a single letter from the alphabet A to Z. How many possible access codes can there be? Well, A to Z, there is a total of 26 letters in our alphabet. Now, why am I writing out the options here? Because there's a rule called the fundamental counting principle. And what this counting principle says is that if you have a certain number of options in each scenario, and you're trying to mix and match them to see how many total combinations you could make, you can actually just multiply the number of options together, and that in total will give you how many total combinations you could make. So for example, if I had three shirts and two different pairs of pants, I could say how many outfits could I make mixing and matching? Three times two would give me six. So same thing here, two times 10 times 26, because of the options mentioned out here, will give us our final answer. Well, first off, anything times 10 is easy, because 10 times anything is just add a zero on the end. So 26 times 10 is going to give me 260. If I just double that because of that guy here, that's going to end up giving me 520. So that means our final answer here is C. Guys, we got a lot to talk about with number six. It says the sun is 93 million miles from Earth and the light travels at a rate of 186,000 per second, miles per second. How long does it take for the light from the sun to reach Earth? So here's the deal. We got a total of 93 million, which is six zeros after that. And we're going to be dividing that because it's how many per miles per second. So we're going to divide that by that. 186,000. Now here's the old, these three zeros will cancel out with these three zeros, leaving us with this. If you didn't know, 186 times 5 gives us 930. So that actually will divide that evenly, giving us 5, and we still have these two zeros. So it takes us 500 seconds, all right? 500 seconds is how long that's going to take. Now with that said, we don't have an answer in seconds, we have it in minutes. So in order to go from seconds to minutes, we are going to need to divide that by 60 because that will move us towards minutes. So what is 60 dividing that 500? Well, here's the crazy part is, it, it is indeed eight and some change, but it's actually eight with a repeated three decimal here. So it's actually eight and a third, and that's not even an option. If you do check the answer key, it says that it's eight and a half, but quite frankly, I think that's a little off. It's actually eight and a third. So I think that might be a typo right there. Either way, answer D. Number seven on the ASVAB says a tanning bed passed for unlimited tanning cost 53 per month this year, but it was only $50 per month last year. What was the percentage increase? If you're thinking to yourself like, oh, I got to find out how much of a savings per year this was or what the difference is per year, it does not matter what it is per year. You can actually just stick with the month because it would scan or like it would scale the same either way. So in this case, let's go ahead and first off, look at the difference here. Obviously, we are increasing by three dollars and the original was 50 so we're going from 50 to 53 so what percent increase is that because we're basing this off of the original 50 we have to see how much of an increase three would be from 50 all right so how do we go about doing that well you end up just doing three divided by 50 now we don't have a calculator here so we do have to do this the long way and that does not um, go into three, obviously. So we got to add a zero. 50 doesn't go into 30, so we add another zero. We do have our decimal point that we'll put in right here, though. So how many times does 50 go into 300? Well, 50 goes into 100 twice, so it will go into 300 six times, and that will be 300 even. So that means that three is 6% all right, 6% increase from the last year. So going from 50 to 53 is going to be a 6% increase, moving the decimal place over twice for a percent. So our answer here is C. Number eight on the ASVAB has a little bit of wordplay here. It says 11 plus 41 is divided by a number. If the result is 13, what's the number? So let's go ahead and best off usually is to actually write this out, put some, some thought into this. So it says here, 11 plus 41. So 11 plus 41 is divided by a number. And the result is 13. So this is what we're looking at here. Well, right off the bat, 11 plus 41. Let's do that one. We are looking here at 52 by adding these two together. Next off, I'm going to multiply this end to the other side. 
to give me 52, and then it cancels out over here, 52 is equal to 13n. Now I have to divide both sides by 13 to get what n is equal to. Well, how many times does 13 go into 52? Well, if I multiply by, well, let's see, 3, we need to get it to ending in a 2, so we want a 12. Well, 12 divided by 3 is 4, so let's try multiplying by 4. 3 times 4 is going to give me 12, carry the 1. 4 times that is going to be 4, plus that 1 will make it 5. So indeed, 52 divided by 13 is 4. So if I divide both sides by 13, that would give me 4 on this side, and the 13s cancel out, making it equal to n. So our final answer here is 4, which it looks like was answer B. How do you know how much money you make after a raise? That's what we're going to look at today with number nine. I'm going to talk about a lot of different ways you could go about doing this. So let's go ahead and get started. Mark received an hourly wage of nine twenty-five. His boss gave him a 4% raise. How much does Mark make per hour now? So right off the bat, um, 4% of $10 would be moving the decimal place over just, what, twice? So that would give us to the four, so 40 cents. So 4% of $10 would be $0.40. Cents. So it's probably going to be somewhere around $0.40, cents, a little bit lower since this is not $10. So looking right at that off the bat, I would guesstimate my answer to be B. But let's go ahead and take a look. Another way of doing this is doing 1.04 times that 925. You could go about doing it this way as well and get your answer. Um, and that would probably also lead to the same thing. Let's try another way we could go about doing this. I know that 5% of this would be half of moving the decimal place once over here because 10% means you move the decimal place that way. So that would be, what, 92 cents? And 5% would be half of that. So that would be, again, we're talking instead of 92, half of 92 would be 46. So 46 cents increase. All right. So again, we're looking at this idea of being at about 40 to 46 cents increase here. That would be 5%, not the 4%. But with that said, looking at these, the only feasible option here is going to be B. So that's what we're going to go with. Let's go ahead and take a look at number 10. We're going to do this one by trying to use the answer they provided us with to give us like a little bit of headway for some guess and check. It says, how many pounds of nails costing seven per pound must be mixed with six pounds of nails costing three per pound to yield a mixture costing four per pound? pound so here's the deal we're starting with six pounds and currently that's at three dollars per pound so that means that six times at three we're currently at eighteen dollars now what i want to see is right here i see two and three so what i want to do is go ahead and try to add two pounds of this seven dollar mixture and see if that gives us an evenly divisible by four number to give us one of these two answers if it's too high or too low that may easily move us to one of these two answers so let's go ahead and start off with two, because that's the first one. So that means I'm going to be adding two pounds. So I'm going from six pounds to seven pounds to eight pounds. In order to do that, I am adding seven dollars each time. So 18 is now going to become 25, and then 25 is going to become 32. So now I have 32 dollars for eight pounds pounds. Well, 32 divided by 8 is indeed $4 per pound. So right off the bat, we can already see the guess and check paid off. Our answer is A. Hey guys, that's all we're going to cover for today. But remember, you can always click on any of these videos over here to help you keep studying for your next attempt on the ASVAC.